Hey everybody, I'm Chef Tom with ATBBQ.com and this is the Z-Man brisket sandwich. But today we're cooking up a legendary sandwich from a legendary barbecue joint. The Z-Man is a brisket sandwich served on a Kaiser roll. It's topped with provolone cheese, onion rings, barbecue sauce. It's a pretty simple concept, but really the perfect combination of textures and flavors. Now this was originally invented at then Oklahoma Joe's, now known as Joe's Kansas City. And over the years, it's been praised by the likes of Paul Rudd, Jason Sudeikis, and normal dudes like us. Honestly, if you know Kansas City barbecue, you know the Z-Man. So today we're recreating this sandwich here on the ATBBQ patio using a Creekstone Farms prime brisket smoked on the Yoder. Let's jump right in. So here we have our flat muscle that I trimmed out from a whole Creekstone prime brisket. Since the Z-Man utilizes sliced, thin sliced brisket, uh, we're gonna be using just the flat muscle. We'll save the point for some burn ins. Um, but haven't done a lot of trimming on the bottom side. On the top, we've taken off some of this hard fat, but we wanna leave a nice fat cap layer on here. About a quarter inch where you can get it, a little bit more, it's just fine. Some places are always going to be thin, but essentially, this flat's just ready to be injected and seasoned up. Now, for the in injection, we're gonna do a really simple mixture here of just beef stock and some of our butcher house brine. We'll do two cups here to get started. And although this is a brine that we often will soak proteins in, if you dilute it just right, which I do one tablespoon of brine powder per one cup of liquid, this is perfect for injecting. It adds a lot of flavor as well, but they're very basic flavors. I mean, you know, salt, pepper, onion, garlic, just kind of a base layer of flavor. So we'll shake that up to start to dissolve the salt A little bit of sugar. Now some of this liquid we're gonna reserve for when we wrap the brisket. So we're gonna pour off about three quarters of a cup. Now when I'm injecting a brisket flat, I like to come in pretty much at a 90 degree angle to those muscle fibers. And I'll start in one corner, we kind of poke around, make some room, pump a little injection in there, and then we'll move down a couple of inches. And we're just gonna work this whole thing in a grid pattern. And don't worry that you're seeing some of that injection come out because more of it is staying in. And what we're doing here is we're gonna add extra juiciness to the brisket, extra flavor to the inside. To keep your brisket from drying out. It's kind of cool with these muscle fibers, you can actually see it plump up and even run down the fiber as you inject the liquid. All right, so now that excess moisture on the board we can use to kind of act as a binder. Just a little bit of a, a wet surface is gonna help that rub to grab on. Speaking of the rub today, we're gonna be using our Plowboy's Bovine Bold, fantastic brisket rub out of Kansas City. We're gonna keep that KC theme going all day long. So this has got a great combination of sweet and salty. Definitely not too much on the sweet side when we're working with briskets. And then some great savory flavors to it as well. A nice big piece of brisket so we can season it accordingly. Get that to just kind of set on the surface and then we're gonna go back to the other side. As you can see, we're not losing any of that injection. It's staying in the meat, which is exactly what we want. This rub's also gonna give us a really nice color on the outside. But what sets this one off for me, I think it's that, that dehydrated Worcestershire and then the celery seed. Fantastic flavors. All right, so now we just wanna let this set up until it appears wet on the surface. That's how we know that the rub has attached to the meat. All right, so this is what it looks like when it's ready to go. You see how that is completely wet on the surface. This is ready to go on the smoker. And today we're cooking on the Yoder Smokers YS640S pellet grill. 
We're running it at 250 degrees with hickory pellets. So we're gonna go right up here on the second shelf. I'm going fat side down just for the thermal barrier. I'd rather that fat take any extra heat rather than the meat side. Over here to the right, you see a brisket flat that we started about six hours ago. Now what we're looking at on here is to really get a nice bark formed, which we're certainly getting there. Uh, color, we want that color exactly where we want it in the end, so we're looking for this dark red mahogany sort of color. Um, this is really close to being ready to wrap. It's about 155 degrees internal, not super important, but just for reference. Well, our brisket flat's been on for six and a half hours now. I really like where the color's at, so we're gonna pull it off at this point and wrap it up to finish. So great color all around right now. We've gone just a little bit darker than it was about 30 minutes ago. Great pooling of the fat on the surface. This is all, all good signs that we're ready to wrap. So we're gonna lay our brisket right on top of two sheets of heavy duty foil to wrap this up in. Before we start wrapping, we're gonna add a little bit of additional liquid. This is that liquid that we reserved from the injection. Only thing I'm gonna do to doctor it up is add about a tablespoon of Worcestershire sauce. So this is going to help ensure that we have a nice juicy brisket as it kind of braises in this liquid. You need about a half cup or so. Then we'll just wrap it up nice and tight, making sure we don't puncture the foil. And then back onto the grill. So I'm gonna find one of the thicker sections of the brisket to put my probe in so I get an accurate reading. That's hot, obviously. And we're reading right around 160 right now. Well, our brisket's been on for nearly 10 hours now. We had a, a nice stall out there for a while, and by nice, I mean annoying, but it happens sometimes. Sometimes that temperature's just not moving. It took a little over an hour for us to break through that stall. Uh, but now we're sitting pretty, we're probing tender. We're at about 203 to 205 internal. The really important part here is, and you can see how pretty that brisket's looking, is how does it feel? There should not be a lot of resistance when we're probing. And that's kind of where we're at right now. So I feel really good to pull this guy off and rest it. Now I just want to wrap this back up and we're going to let this rest for at least 30 minutes before we're slicing into it. So now that the brisket's out and resting, we're gonna make some onion rings. All right, so we're gonna do some like, I don't know, half inch rings probably. Something about like that. Get rid of that outer layer. And we'll just start to pop these out. So for our onion rings, we're going to do a two-stage process. We're going to start with a beer batter, and then we're going to coat that in some breadcrumbs for some extra crunch. So I've got a cup and a half of flour. I'm going to add one bottle of beer. Today we're using the Boulevard KC Lager, perfect for the occasion. Probably could have got a bigger boat here. All right, trying to whisk most of those lumps out of there. We're also going to season this up with a tablespoon of that same rub that we used on the brisket. Actually, we'll do about a tablespoon and a half for what we're doing right now. The bovine bold in the batter. Now for the panko, we've got a couple cups here. We're going to do couple tablespoons of our seasoning in there as well. And then let me flip these around because we're gonna go batter first, panko second, into the frying oil. All right, so we're gonna go with the dip. Then coat it in the panko. 
and then right into our hot oil. All right, so this is just vegetable oil, a large 10 inch skillet, about a third of the way full with oil, and it's sitting at about 375 degrees. Just gonna continue this process. We'll work these through one by one. When we start to get some golden brown, we'll turn them. And smell the beer and the beer batter. Don't believe that's a Joe's KC move there, but called an audible on that one. All right, it's time to get our brisket sliced up and get these sandwiches assembled. There we go. That's looking good. Ooh boy, that looks juicy. Pretty, pretty, pretty smoke ring on that. And I'm guessing by the way that's pulling that it's super tender. Remember this is a sandwich where we're shaving the slices pretty thin, just like they do at the restaurant. Oh yeah, that's a beautiful dangle. Tugs right apart. Oh. Nothing like that first bite of brisket. A little bit of fat on the surface. Smoky, juicy. Just great overall beefy flavor. I'm gonna cut this down so we can get some shorter slices to work with on our sandwich. We can't forget about this juice in the packet. All these slices need to go back into that juice because there is just so much flavor. All right, let's get some cheese, some buns and some cheese going and put this sandwich together. All right, so we're going a little above and beyond today. We fired up the auto wild to really get a nice toast on these buns and some melty cheese on top of our brisket. All right, so this is just a top-down broiler. Kind of melt that butter into the bun and toast it up a bit. The Auto Wild actually gets crazy hot for searing steaks. I think they say like 1,500 degrees, but it's a great tool for a lot of things. So essentially what we're going to do here is pile up some of our brisket like it's going onto the sandwich and then we'll top off each one of these little mounds with some provolone. Look at that, full cheese meltage, beautiful. All right, put these things together now. We're gonna hit these with some Kansas City barbecue sauce. This is the Cowtown. This is as close to the Joe's KC sauce as you can get without going there and getting some yourself. There's our brisket and our cheese. You can do this in your broiler at home. Doesn't have quite the same magic as the Auto Wild, but it'll work. And then every sandwich gets two onion rings. A little more sauce on top.
All right, I'm gonna cut into this because I can't take it all down at once. Look at that. Stacked high. Let's get a taste. Oh yeah. Brisket, baby. Gotta love that brisket. Man, that's got great smoke on it. All the flavors are there. So a little bit of sweetness from the barbecue sauce is all it needs. Not too much. But boy, the thing that sets that apart is that crunch from that panko on the onion ring. So much texture and a great contrast to how tender and juicy that brisket is. It's all about balance. And this sandwich has got it all. Good work, Joe. Well, thank you guys so much for watching. Be sure to check out atbbq.com for all the products featured in today's video. If you enjoy the recipe, hit that subscribe button. And if you have any questions or comments or there's anything you'd like to see me cook, let me know in the comment section down below. Let's be good to one another. For more recipes, tips, and techniques, head over to atbbq.com slash the sauce. All things barbecue, where barbecue legends are made.